Welcome back to a new Anime of the Week. Today we're taking a deep dive into a truly monstrous sea serpent, the King of Herrings. The King of Herrings is more commonly known as the giant oarfish, owing to the fact it's an oarfish and can measure up to 8 meters long, making it the world's longest bony fish. Some reports have its maximum length at 11 meters, but these are unconfirmed, and though the longest verifiable record is 8 meters, they are more commonly found to be only 3 meters long. But that is still massive. The name King of Herrings is rather misleading, as it is in fact not a herring, nor do they possess a form of societal governance in which power is invested in a single individual decided by a patriarchal hereditary system, who then rules over its many herring subjects. The reason for this nickname is because fishermen would commonly sight the giant oarfish near shoals of herring, and its large head of appendages made it look like it had a crown. Many fishermen also thought that they might be guiding the shoals of herring, adding to the whole king idea. For any who don't know, fish usually live in water. But the question is, what water does this fish live in? Well, the king of herrings can be found in waters all over the world, inhabiting all major oceans and seas except the Arctic and Antarctic. This is because they mostly enjoy tropical and temperate waters, and so they are most commonly found in the tropics and subtropics, however they are still rare to find globally. Sometimes sailors would spot them in the oceans in the early days of exploration, and it is theorised that they perhaps contributed to the idea of sea serpents. The reason they are seen by sailors is that they tend to live near the surface of the ocean, in the epipelagic and mesopelagic zones, as their very maximum depth is only around a thousand metres. Which sounds like a lot, but for the ocean that's pretty shallow. Despite their long slender bodies giving the image of a powerful sea serpent, they are actually very bad swimmers. This is because they possess comically small fins for their massive body size. They can undulate, swimming from side to side and generate some thrust, but they are nowhere near fast enough to catch most things in the ocean. They can also do what is called amiform swimming, where their long slender dorsal fin undulates and their body stays straight, but again this is too slow to catch most things. So they mainly feed upon zooplankton and any dead fish or other bits of detritus they can find. Sometimes they might be lucky enough to catch a small fish or a slow moving jellyfish, in which case they will of course eat it, but zooplankton is their staple. To catch zooplankton they will position themselves vertically in the water like a sleeping sperm whale, and are then taken away on the currents. While they do this they take in water to breathe, but any zooplankton will be caught before they can escape through their gill slits. This is because their gill arch is covered in small cartilage and bone structures called gill rakes that capture any bits of zooplankton going through, sort of like how the ciliated cells down your trachea try Try and capture foreign material before you breathe it in and it gets into your lungs. Little is known of the breeding habits of the giant oarfish, but what I can tell you is that they do not look after their young at all. Once the mating season is finished, thousands of tiny eggs around 2mm in diameter are released to float in the ocean. The eggs float on top of the water, and when they hatch the young essentially look like adults, just very very small. These fish are really really weird, because almost all of the vital internal organs of the fish are in the first quarter of the body length, the rest of it is mostly one massive tail. This means that they can actually survive an attack on the latter three quarters of their body fairly easily, however they don't usually get attacked by anything. There is also evidence to suggest that they might be able to deliberately detach parts of their tails like lizards, however they don't seem to have any natural predators, so they most likely do this in order to become more efficient swimmers or conserve energy. The evidence for this comes from when we look at the consistent injuries found on giant oarfish over five feet long. Many of them seem to have traumatic injuries on their tails, and yet they are not consistent with bites of any kind. And seeing the oarfish are not believed to have any predators, it is believed that these injuries are self-inflicted, where the oarfish has deliberately lost its tail for efficiency reasons. Another adaptation is their skin. Despite being very shiny like scaly fish, oarfish are actually scaleless fish and possess skin. The reason they are still so shiny is that on fish the thing that makes the scales shiny isn't the scales, it is guanine crystals and cytoplasm underneath the scales that shine through. So giant oarfish still retain the amazing shine that aids in camouflage, because if you remember these fish like to stay near the surface, and so being so shiny and reflective, anything looking up sees the amazing dazzling sunlight above. Perhaps the reason they don't have any predators is that their camouflage works so well, or it could be because of what I'm about to talk about. King of herrings meat is disgusting. It is gelatinous and considered rather inedible by humans, which is one of the many reasons they are classed as least concerned by the IUCN, because they are not commercially fished. They are however sometimes seen as trophy fish due to their immense size and resemblance to a sea serpent, but this just means a few fishermen will try and catch them around the world, and not industrial commercial fishing boats that could decimate their populations. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, if you'd like to see more from us.